Hello everyone and welcome to Radiographic Interpretation Made Easy. This is case 13 and uh, today I am going to discuss with you a case of dense evaginators. Uh, my name is Dr. Lahari. I am from the Department of Oral Medicine and Radiology. The steps in radiographic interpretation would be uh, the same as usual. First of all, the radiograph taken, normal anatomical landmarks, faults if any, the tooth or teeth of interest, crown, root, height of alveolar crest, periodontal ligament space, lamina dura, alveolar bone proper, radiographic diagnosis and differential diagnosis wherever appropriate. Today we're talking about the radi this particular radiograph which is taken for the third quadrant and the teeth that are seen are 3, 4, 3, 5, 3, 6 and 3, 7. Now um, I do not really see uh, any major faults in particular but we do see some minor brown stains which could be because of incomplete washing of the fixer. And this can happen and these stains could oxidize over a period of time and just remain permanently over dental films. Moving on to the normal anatomical landmarks, on this particular radiograph what do we see? Um, first of all the external oblique ridge which is seen as a faint uh, shadow over the uh, posterior molar region. Then we see the uh, mandibular canal also called as the inferior alveolar canal. The mental foramen which is generally seen in the uh, mandibular premolar region. A very prominent lamina dura especially in, uh, in case of the first premolar here and uh, an interesting finding which is the cervical burnout seen as radiolucent um, areas in the cervical portion of the teeth especially the premolars which mimics uh, caries. Tooth of interest that we are going to look at first is the 3-5. The crown of the 3-5 here if you notice is not very clear and, and can pass off as a normal enamel and dentine and the but we notice that the coronal pulp is very wide. Um, <clears throat> but there is something more interesting that we would like to note when it comes to the crown of the first premolar that is 3-4. Um, <clears throat> we notice that there is a conical elevation in the enamel and this is called as a dense evaginatus. Uh, it also involves the dentine, the enamel and dentine and sometimes it can involve a portion of the pulp which protrudes out like a protuberance and uh, this is what would have been uh, e present even in 3.5 and presumably would have led to the problem that we are seeing in um, the tooth. Right, so that's the colical innovation that I am talking about in 3-4. Dense evaginatus, which was first described by Leong, is uh, specifically seen in premolars and very common among the Asian population. Um, I have picked up these pictures from the internet to describe to you what could actually happen. And in this diagrammatic representation, you can see that uh, the pulp actually uh, protrudes along with the uh, dentine and uh, enamel and uh, leads to a conical type of elevation because of which it has very high chance of getting infected and inflamed. Going back to our tooth of interest, we notice that the root has very wide radicular pulp uh, because of which the walls of dentine and cementum have become very thin on the either side. Uh, this has led to an open apex and a very distinct root resorption at the apical portion of the root. The height of alveolar crest appears normal with uh, about 3 mm uh, of bone seen uh, below the CEJ which is fairly uh, normal for uh, this patient. Moving on to the periodontal ligament space and the lamina dura. We notice that there is normal PDL space uh, up to the uh, apical one third of the root that is the cervical and the middle portion of the root have normal PDL as well as normal lamina dura. The space is normal but as, as we move to the apical part of the root we notice that the PDL becomes gradually fuzzy and we can't see it anymore as well as the lamina dura which is lost at the apical one third of the root. 
the alveolar bone proper is um, the area of the bone that is seen below the apical portion of the root. In this case, we see that there is a diffuse radio big appearance in the bone and the trabecular pattern is altered, doesn't look like normal stepladder pattern. The radio opacity is ill-defined and it covers roughly around two times one cm uh, in size and blends into the um, adjacent normal bone. So you can't really make out the boundaries of the radio opacity. The, uh, this is called as inflammatory bone uh, response. Uh, which is due to osteoblastic activity and, and uh, which we call as condensing ostitis, which is also called as sclerosing ostitis. To summarize, the radiographic diagnosis for this case would be 3-5 dense evaginatus with condensing ostitis. The differential diagnosis could be osseous dysplasia, um, generally in a mixed stage with uh, or also called a cemental or dysplasia or cemental osseous dysplasia and also sclerosing osteomyelitis. So for further reading I would recommend this article which uh, <clears throat> is out in the latest uh, Journal of American Dental Association and uh, it, it outlines the current treatment options and, is, um, and it is a good read. That's it. Thank you for me and uh, thank you for listening to me. For, for any further doubts or clarifications, please feel free to email me.